<laughs> All right. Well, that being said, let's get let's try to focus on the game here, so I don't lose uh, I lose track of what's happening. RDU's hand as Zoo is actually really incredible. Doctor Boom might not be the most amazing card in the early game, but it's going to be an amazing transition sometime in the late game. Yeah, pretty much. Uh, RDU has oh the perfect pure. Yeah, this yep. is godlike. Especially well, with that three drop top deck. But Trump does have the fiery win axe, so still going to be good. The funny thing here is. Actually, this Flame Imp will actually sur probably survive because yes. the Spiral Wax will be able to kill the Voidwalker and then the Dire Wolf Alpha, but the uh, Flame Imp is going to get at least 7 damage in. Well, I guess he might armor up Shield Slam on yeah, the following exactly. turn. Right? Exactly. This should be a decent Imp. It's only 4 damage though, unfortunately. Mm-hmm. Are we going to see a Drain Life from Trump here? A Drain Life? Oh wow, I never looked at it that way. You confuse me, Monk. Well played. Isn't that what everyone says though? I've never heard that, but that's Just definitely the best way to look at it. I've wow. never heard it either. It's perfect. It's the perfect analogy. Well, RDU does have the Imp Gang boss, and there is no Death Bite in Trump's hand at the moment. And in fact, he's got no real play. Uh, that, well, that, that could help. That but Implosion could, help. could feed into that a little bit. If it hits like average or like 66% chance to kill the Acolyte outright. Mm -hmm. It's always chance that it's low, though. <laughs> if it does, I think RDU's <laughs> Salt is going to pour through the screen. In waves of anguish. Nope. Two damage. Nope. The average has been hit, and Trump still hasn't found. Oh, never mind. That will be useful sometime soon. Yeah, we that. have seen players actually throw two brawls into Warrior these days just yeah. for the Zoo matchup. I agree wholeheartedly with that approach. I think Zoo has become. It's always been a weak spot for Warrior, but now it's more relevant than it's ever been. RDU cannot overextend here. There is no way. It's so risky. But you don't have any other plays, though. Yeah. So I think you, he is going to work in. The Brawl is going to be amazing. At least he's going to be able to cycle this mm -hmm. for the time being. Unfortunately for him, he'd be neither one of you in that. So, or is that, not, is that unfortunate or unfortunate? Because more chance of one one coming out live out of a Brawl, right? Yeah, less <laughs> imps are likely to come out. Well, Trump probably has to brawl, unless he goes for... No, I can't see much of anything else. I mean, Emperor doesn't feel like a play. Shield Maiden could be decent, but you're getting hard countered by something like a... Powerwhelming. Powerwhelming that just wrecks it, and then mm -hmm. you get punished. Well, we'll have to see what Trump decides to do. I think the imps make him hesitate because they're not really that valuable in that they're not minions. So he's not really getting the five for one that we're looking at. If you know, he's calculating that way. An even greedier play could actually just be playing the emperor. Emperor, yeah. Because you do have three ways to armor gain in your hand, and you also have a brawl to control the board in future turns. Yeah, like you could play shield block, armor smith, brawl on effectively the same turn. Much difference between Shield Maiden and Brawl because the Brawl will effectively in average. I think Emperor's yeah, Emperor is a greedy play, but it's not that greedy since he's not afraid of dying right now. Like he's gonna be able to play Shield Block, Brawl, then Armorsmith, or the other way around, pick your choice. Oh dear. Oh, hello. Life token coming. Defender Vargas. This uh, this should force RDU into killing the Emperor and then playing into the egg, I think. Like, cause playing the egg protects you against brawl, at the very least. Yeah, I like it. To the face. Yeah, just leaving as many amps as possible on the board, just to be optimistic just stay and try to yeah try to set up for the uh, Malganis. Yeah, the two turns possibly. away Malganis that Trump will obviously not be able to answer right. Now, because uh, because Trump, or rather, because RDU has traded into that Emperor, now Trump can just play a little bit more defensively and just save the brawl for a later turn. 
For example. <laughs> for example, <laughs> now. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Doctor Seven. Wow, those knives, man. This knife juggler threw at the very least twelve knives this game, I think. Oh my god. It's been it's been pretty crazy. The aims you wanted to you want to keep them for Magnes. <laughs> um, that's pretty good. I mean, Would if you want to go for a brawl or became harder here. I think the play is to play as greedily as possible to go for turn ten Sylvanas brawl, oh. and then and then you don't die in the process because you've played BGH, right? Possibly. I guess it could just go for big game owner. Then it, you have so much mana left over. Armor Smith, Armor Smith. Yeah. Armor Smith. No, I don't think he'll ever keep. Well, he might think about it because he's got Alex Straza plus the Sylvanas back to back. I kind of like the greedy play here. <laughs> I wonder if Trump's going to go for it. In hand. And he looks like he's doing it. Great success. Still go brawl. No. <laughs> yeah, could still brawl after playing two minions. Yes. Yeah, let's do this. Yes, you mean. Ultimate value. That just means you're really confident. Yeah, that that's what it means. Now RD life tap. Oh, Bane of Doom. Ooh. Wait, what could that really bring out that makes this hell? Actually, a void caller would be crazy good against that brawl. <laughs> No, nope, uh, not quite yeah. the, the well, same void here. It, it is a void something. Yeah, not quite the same. Just curious, why is there any reason to... Above the egg makes you able to trade into the... Uh, no matter where the knife's hit, you can still trade into the... Yeah, he, he the wanted main. the knife juggler to hit in into that and then just trade the what's it called the Nubian egg in basically yeah and now the question is does Trump execute the juggler or place a bonus here or so both you could play both honestly yeah I really love how slowly Trump is playing this in no he doesn't seem to be afraid of anything I'm a little worried about this, though, if I have to be frank. But I'm not frank. I'm noxious. No, you're noxious. Exactly. <laughs> oh. Whoa. Whoa. So, whoa. Okay. Whoa. 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 What? <laughs> what just happened here? Well, I think RDE just lost the game. I think what happens is the egg pops off the brawl, so there's a 50% chance that. It's still. No, you kill the I egg. don't even. It doesn't no, even no, you, matter. Does this you, is over? No, you. Yeah, you kill the egg. And this is over. Run, and then you win. Yeah, that's it. Oh There's, my god. I, Trump is right now wondering what RDU's thought process was. He's like, wait, is there something lurking about to hit me in the face or not? Well, I just think that RDU, um, he just doesn't put Trump on brawl because Trump has had so many turns to play brawl, but he just chosen not to do it. So, Trump's kind of. Uh, "Quote unquote greedy and defensive play will really be helping him out here." Yeah, I mean this is this is perfect. Uh oh, RDU doesn't seem to care much, but he's scratching his head a bit faster now. Uh. Uh. Thanks for the free this, uh, Yeah, I guess. Uh, well, although he's not out of this yet, though, not completely at the very least. So tab void caller. And defender. That's not too bad. Yeah, it's pretty sweet. It lives through That's the Nerugan. So. Well, the power cards in Trump's hand could make a huge difference. They will make a huge difference. Yeah, I like the Ragnaros here. Yeah. Did you want to attack first, or? I don't even know if you pop the Void Caller on your own turn. Uh, if it summons more fine. damage, you're gonna be in a world of hurt. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you can't allow it to summon even more stuff that you can't handle right away. I just thought it's gonna summon rag, then, then it could make sense, maybe. Oh yeah, go for the fifty-fifty that it hits rag. I mean the the doom guard if it does come out. Mm -hmm. All right, yeah, that that could have been fine. So is this lethal for RTU up. or? Oh my god. Okay, <laughs> no, it did. This didn't backfire yet. Oh no. 
two damage. Okay, so he trades and gets. Oh, does he even trade? Ugh. Oh, he got the void caller. That's wow. Okay. Oh my god. <laughs> I can't believe what I'm looking at. I cannot <laughs> believe it. Hits, man. <laughs> Those knives for RDU this game have been crazy good. Well, knife hits can be good, but can these boombot hits be great as well? It depends. I think Trump could consider Alex Straza if the boombots do what they have to. Otherwise, it's going to have I... to be an Armorsmith play and try to get a bit more armor off of this. I kind of like yeah. Armorsmith and, and uh, Ragnaros here. It just fits the curve really well. You get at least two armor. Mm -hmm. And Ragnaros might be able to do some work as well, especially because there's so many minions on the board that it's really likely for Ragnaros to hit a minion. And down goes an imp. He wants to kill a minion with that boombot. It needs to hit something. Yep. Needs to kill. Uh oh. That, that's as bad as it got, I think. Or at least it got pretty bad. Not the worst, but. Not the worst. The one damage. If it hits face, quite a bit of damage coming up. Well, RDU could even, you know, tap into Power Overwhelming at this point. So seven damage on the board. He's five away from the win. And uh, the game nope. boss is not going to do it. Yeah, and game boss is not. Coil. And then Axtraza is right here to help. Can you consider <laughs> killing the maybe even thing? like I don't know? I was considering killing Mortal coiling the. The imp. The oh imp my god. Big boss. <laughs> but that, no, that doesn't make sense. No, yeah, no. with no with an armor smith. Shades. Exactly. Unless you kill the armor smith of Doomgar, but then you surrender your entire turn of damage. The only out you really had at this point. Well, if this Ragnaros goes face, this is still not over. Although it's getting pretty close to over either way. Does Trump actually need that one extra health? There's. Nine damage on board. Actually, so it's for, actually if, really hard. Yeah, he's setting up lethal for face if he seven. He needs to find H from the top. That is not a helpful card at all. That is, in fact, the very opposite of that. The very opposite of a helpful card for. Oh wow! Ooh. Wow, that's actually really good. Yeah, that now is... he can uh, defender of Argus and, and then Mortal Quill as well. Does he want the Quill? Yeah. I guess he does. It gives yeah, him yeah. an imp, an extra target for Ragnaros. This has been a five, really seven, close game against Alex Reza as well. This has been a really close game, and he finds the P.O. A second one would be Heaven Sent, or the Doom Guard, in fact, if he's got a second one in this deck. Ooh. Oh, Grob seems really good. Uh, yeah, but it can't kill anything. I mean, if you could, you could if you could use Rag... Testmaster D1-1. Yeah, I mean, you could play Grom for the body, I think that's... definitely a viable line of play. Whoa. But I mean... Actually, you probably want to just armor Ruby instead of killing one one. Yeah, because either way, <laughs> you're spawning more with the M Gang boss if you do anything. The Grom there's actually, up. if Rag if uh, Rag goes face here, there's actually nine damage on board. So if he goes face like... and Rag goes, yeah, it would be, yeah, it would be lethal. So basically, Rag needs to. Hit the Doom Guard it, ideally, basically. Or 2 3 at least. 2 3, yeah. yeah. The, the Argus or the Doom Guard. Um, so RDU has three fifths of a chance just to win here. Wait, no, he, uh, if he armors up, Wait. he goes up to 14. Wait, no, man. Yeah, he's, he's well, up to 14. Yeah, he only has on, the, damage, on the armor up is fine. Uh, on the armor the up armor is okay. Is fine. Yeah. Wow. Got but it. RDU could tap into a win here. Like, if, even if Rag goes face, he could still tap into a win. So it's not over yet, and Trump is going to opt for the Cruel Taskmaster play, reducing the odds of Rag hitting a 1-1 in the process, going for the 50-50 on the hit. And it does hit what he needs at okay. this point, but... that's decent. Oh! oh, oh yeah. Wait a minute! <laughs> that's game! That's game. Oh man, what a top deck. No, top nothing Trump, Trump could have done. Nothing Trump could have done would have prevented this loss. RDU winning with Zoo versus Warrior. Well, that's the first game taken away, but Trump is going to be able to reuse that Control Warrior. And RDU's lineup. I mean, how, how good is it? He's got a Hunter left and a Warrior, so there's there might be a coin flip in the Warrior versus Warrior. 
So resident sleeper, but you know, 50% win rate on general on either side. Or are you gonna use control warrior though? I feel like he's gonna, he's one of the players will lean towards more. I hope he Grim plays Grim Patron. I think it's a great yeah. deck, and I think against Control Warrior, because it's a control deck, you generally have a bit of an edge because you just combo your way to victory. You wait I'm not for. Not so sure about that. Turn, I think but... the Control Warrior actually has a slight edge, from the, my past experience. The, the deck but, is yeah. too young, but to, to make that claim, yeah, but I, I think that the armor up factor does play into it very much. Yeah, mm -hmm. I would have to agree. I would probably say the Control Warrior does have a slight edge, mm -hmm. but I personally, I would actually put RTU on. Control Warrior as well instead of Patient Warrior, and that's I think that's partly because he knows Trump. RDU knows Trump will probably run Warrior, so might as well run a greedier Warrior in order to uh, counter that Warrior. Right, right. right. That's interesting. Which that's a good line of thinking. Yeah, that's yeah. definitely yeah. good. And uh, and Trump, we haven't seen any greedy cards in his deck yet, like Rag, Alexstrasza. Those aren't necessarily greedy. What we really need is um, cards like Ysera and perhaps uh, Gorhal. Those are really the key cards in the Warrior matchup, right? Yeah, because it'll go to fatigue, not systematically, because some some games end very prematurely with you know shield maiden beatdowns that end up and uh, you know you take armor away, then shield slam becomes useless, and eventually it snowballs into a victory. But a lot of the time, if both players draw equally well, it'll go down to fatigue, and the Isera plays, for instance, will be the winning ones. Like Gorhal giving him, uh, you know, a four for one. Those plays make uh, the control. Versus control warrior matchup a lot easier. Yep. Uh, we are seeing that yeah. the next match is going to be Trump playing the warrior and RDU playing the hunter. So, depending on the type of hunter it is, it could either be a good matchup or a bad matchup for Trump. Warrior is favored against base hunter, very favored in fact, but it's not so favored against mid range hunter, which is the type of hunter that has been coming back into the scene more lately. Um, that being said, RDU. He is kind of known more for face hunter than he is mid range hunter. Is he just not? Like, I've seen him play mid range hunter in the past, and I think if your opponent is playing warrior, um, you might just queue up a mid range into it. Like, cause I, I know RDU prepares a lot for his lineups. That's one of the things he does most: prepare his lineups like to perfection or what he feels is perfection. And I think bringing mid range against Trump would be a great call. Mm -hmm. yeah. It looks like mid range it, it, with the polished shredder. Yeah, definitely. But you say that RDU is good at preparing lineups, but sometimes he over prepares. He oh yeah, he st he thinks one step too far and then outthinks himself into playing bad decks effectively. But yeah, Trump has been playing a lot, a lot of warriors. So maybe that's what RDU was hoping for. Shredder in Warrior is something that I haven't seen in Trump's version of the Warriors, but it's it will definitely help in this matchup because one of the things that um, warrior struggle against mid range hunter is that you really like the mid range board. Yeah, exactly. Very, you very really important. want the board control. You want to set it up so that you can deal with high mains going into turn six. I really feel that this matchup is a lot about, like, the early game is all about who can take board control early so that it's all about whether the warrior can deal with a turn six high main or not. So ideally for Trump, he wants to set up his board in a way that he has about five power on board going into turn six. Like he drops a low thip down or perhaps he has a combination of a cruel taskmaster plus a pilot shredder on turn five. So when uh, RDU plays the Savannah high main, then he has the exact right answers. Do you agree with the, by the way, I'm just out of the, going back to the mulligan phase, do you agree with the Trump keeping three, four, and five drop? I don't know. I think it's a bit greedy. <laughs> like, it, it, that means he expected mid-range, that's for sure. That's as much as we can say, right? Yeah, um, yeah, certainly. And this is the playoff deciding match, actually. This is going to decide who gets to stay in the top three. Yeah, we will have to remind you guys from Group A or Group Alliance, we have Strife Crow finishing first, and then we have Firebat finishing second, and Show finishing third. For Group B or Horde, we have Life Coach finishing first, Hyped will be either finishing second or third, and either Colento or Trump will be the final player to make it to the playoffs. So after this match um, between RDU and Trump, it could be Trump making it to the playoffs, or it could be Kalento making it to the playoffs. Yeah. So after this match, we'll know exactly who will be in the Kingwood Pro League Finals playoffs. Yeah, Trump. This is Trump's big, uh, big match at this point. 
Like he wants to win this, so he's playing the execute on the creeper. Pops the Houndmaster. I think this is a. It's going to allow him to use his weapon, but he's getting, you know, dangerously low on health. I feel yeah, for somebody without an AOE, damage. without an AOE effect at all, this is getting a bit problematic for him. RDU almost just has to wait it out, and I mean, Trump's curve is way off. He needs to find something very soon. Not sure that's it. Yeah. Armor Smith, armor up. Kill the mad scientist, wipe most of the board. Would you kill mad scientist here? <laughs> well, I don't to, but then you're, you know, you're. I guess going you could pop the things. shredder, but that's so much potential damage against yeah. you. Oh no! Whoa! Well, he's dead. Yep, this is over. Yeah, he's dead. That was a quick Auto game. Mid range <laughs> hunter just punched control warrior to. Complete submission. Hey, he doesn't well, have I to guess use that's the it. <laughs> oh wow! Talk about a quick game. That's not what I expected. I expected Control War to put up a bigger fight, but that start from Trump was very greedy. Yeah, way too slow. Are you, very greedy. Are you kind of stretches a bit? He's like, yeah, I got this, no problem. Yeah, and then uh, the reverse sweep effect of Kalento's play against Orange earlier will kick in. Right. This is uh, this is definitely possible. It's not over. I mean, Trump still has a warrior to go through. Uh, still has his warrior that RD has to go through. And the only deck he's got left is uh, is his warrior. So it's going to be a mirror match. Yeah. Um, and I assume Trump the... has. I assume Trump yeah. has Mac. Mac yeah. Mage and Druid. Tr Trump almost certainly has Mac Mage. And yeah. if it's Mac Mage, Druid, and Warrior, I think Trump still has a chance. Druid is going to be favored. Mech Mage, I would think, is also going to be slightly favored. Warrior, I flip have to coin. say, yeah, flip a coin there. But I have to say, if I had to give it to someone, it would be RDU in that matchup because he might be just bringing, like I said, the more controlling warrior. And it's usually the warrior that's bigger, that has bigger minions, is going to be the one that's favored. Yeah, if he's prepared against Trump, he's going to be very greedy with his build. And he might have even included you know, Pilot Sky Golems at that point. You know, that's how greedy it might have been. Where he built a deck that's just made to make uh, other control warriors feel like they're lacking answers. Playing the neutral high main effectively. I wonder why people don't use the Pilot uh, Sky Golem as much. I, it was cool. really popular in Control Paladin and Control Warrior for a while. Right, it's like it, it. It was the perfect way to make control warriors struggle. Um, and control <laughs> paladin had two sky golems and two shredders for a while with double lay on hands, double heal bot. Like it, like it was called like purple turtle, like the turtle uh, turtle dranks deck, purple drank deck, turtle drank. Yes, purple dranks deck. I think was running that, and it was really good for a while. I'm not sure it's seeing much play nowadays though. Also, to now to think about it, Trump is one of the players who. Play the Paladin for the longest time and well, until recent, yeah. very recent, right? True. Kuyuki so, before him, and then Trump picked up the torch. Yeah. And then Control Warriors, especially greedier ones, struggle against them. So maybe RDU didn't bring it. We'll see. Oh man, it's going to be Patron Warrior from RDU. Yeah, we're looking it's... at the starting hands. You'll just see them come up on the screen in a second here. Um, it is definitely the Gnomish Inventor is a pretty big giveaway. Yeah. Uh, this he is just got the really same exact hand after he mulliganed away. Yeah. <laughs> I have to say, this is going to be this is one of my favorite decks to watch and one of my favorite decks to commentate because just so many crazy things can happen, especially when Emperor Thorazin comes down on turn 6. I think Emperor is almost the key card of the match, like of the deck. It's funny what that card has enabled. Amazing things. Yeah. I like the fact and, that it adds so many, so much diversity to combo decks. Possibly things that couldn't have been run are not possible. In mirror match, I usually don't want to play a lot of against a warrior turn three on curve because your Acolyte. opponent is likely going to have web. But I guess in this matchup, if you're playing green patch on one, it's okay to just yeah, play it. Yeah, you can you can just play on curve, draw into as many things as possible. Yeah, and now he's found two frothings in the war song. This is just a disaster waiting to happen. But I think this uh, notion inventor is telling Trump, wait, this is not Control Warrior. I think uh, this is still fine. Like, RDU's hand isn't super amazing because he doesn't have um, many card draws going into it. Like, he can build up his board now, 
But I think ideally he might have wanted like uh, either a loot hoarder or a second acolyte or something like that, just to draw into his combo, and also just to draw into Emperor Thorazin on turn six. Yeah, as soon as possible. The fraud thing is actually a big win condition, and Trump does find it, but that's not RD's hand. This is that's a pretty nice good Emperor turn. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> talk about the value here. Into into Doctor Six now. We're talking. <laughs> yeah, we're talking about seven coins gotten for free, and uh, wow. I, I wouldn't like to see a control warrior with an emperor on seven cards in hand. No. Not one bit. This is kind of awkward turn. For How me. often does RDU punch face? No, never. Could you also play well whirlwind? It's happening. He's punching face. Oh my god. <laughs> is, he, is he really punching face? Yes. Oh man. This it's, is it's happening. This is it. This is. With a taskmaster, I think. Oh man, you you do have to cruel task right mm -hmm. at this just point because it's already weak to execute. Whoa. You just like shove all in. <laughs> oh, maybe he'll armor up. All right, he's gonna keep that okay, for uh, never mind. a grim patron, maybe. Because he... later on, you can also just use that to kill your opponent off in lane with the uh, frosting buster. You still have the combo with frosting or charge. Yeah, it's on eight mana for now, but it's still okay. And Trump doesn't have the answer to the armor smith right away. Not that big of a deal, to be honest. But yeah, I have to say I kind of favor Trump right here. Yeah, I, I think his follow-ups are just insane. The shield maiden, the Alex draws on eight. I think he's going to be in a great spot. The the lack of card draw for RDU was really like if he'd had a battle rage in that hand when this happened, this would have been great. But there was none. Would you just armor up here? Yeah, I think I would. Wait, can you believe this? We're gonna see three matches, up to three matches with Grim Patron. Well, up I'm two. certainly excited. Yeah, I am. <laughs> I, I really do want to see that. This is the deck I've been waiting for. Oh, here comes Taskmaster yeah. into pain. Okay. Wait, does he have an answer to this? Um. Yeah, RDU just has to go more, more all in. That's his like only opportunity, to be honest. That's it's... a lot of damage on Frothing Berserker, by the way. Yeah. Six four already. Oh. Well, there's an answer, Brawl. Well, what if it misses? Oh, never mind. <laughs> Here's oh, answer. never mind. Yeah, yes. <laughs> wow. Stop asking me questions, dang it. You have an answer for everything. Might as well just go for Shell Maiden and Shell Slam. Even with... he doesn't need Brawl. In case you can save a Brawl just in case your opponent have draws into Green Patron. Some sort of combo. Uh, a Battle Rage. Uh, That's two card draws right here. Not bad. I it's remember funny here uh, that... What's up? Go ahead. Yeah. I was going to say, it's funny that you actually want yourself to be damaged when you're well, running Battle Rage. Yeah, it's kind of the uh, the exact opposite of what, you know, uh, some, some approaches you take on Warrior. What I like about it, though, is that it plays really amazingly well in the idea that Blizzard probably had in the development of Hearthstone with Mortal Strike and now Revenge. Where you're trying to get yourself in a specific health range as low as possible and benefit off that. Uh, now, what Trump has to be thinking now is he really doesn't want to play these armor smiths, actually, because no, they're going to give his opponent infinite Grim Patrons. Yeah, it's so dangerous. So I actually feel like... Yeah. Even though he wants armor, these armor smiths are going to be dead in his hand for the rest of the game. RDU has a, I mean, we're favoring him, but it's still possible that he's able to take this. We are favoring Trump the whole game, right? Oh yeah, right. We're favoring Trump all, all the games. So RDU could still get it. It's close enough, depending on the hands that are found. I mean, a two-mana Warsong Commander is nothing to scoff at. Man. So, Alex, take the armor smith. Yep, Trump's gonna have three armor smith potentially. <laughs> and that the 3 1 armor smith isn't too bad against yeah. Green Patron, but, certainly not. Yeah, the problem here is though, like, pretty much R because RDUs has used both Frothing Berserkers, there's His... no other means that he can charge for lethal here. No, there, that's, what I, that's no. what I thought initially. When I saw both Frothings, I was pretty excited for RDU because those are the cards that you need against Control Warrior to insta-kill him. So I think he might have Worgens in his deck, maybe. Um, I don't know but if most he Most lists these it. days though, pretty much cut the Worgens. I know, I know, there's none pretty much anywhere, but I'm curious to see maybe 
if he thought he had something beyond the frothings because his lines of play seemed to indicate that he was he didn't care much about them because he really went all in on them maybe a bit too early perhaps well trump's emperor was definitely a big deal though it's really easy to fall into that trap um, when you're playing green picture on deck to think that you can you can get away with those card oh, you plays can. then very often you really can't maybe that's just what happened yeah, it's just like, oh, I have so much damage and I have charges in my hand. I have a bunch of draws coming up. I have great club. Maybe I can just go all in like this and then that just didn't happen. So, War Song, Loot Hoarder. Now, kill the Armorsmith and execute Alex. And then you see where that leads you. I charge a Loot Hoarder? Yeah, that's what you do. <laughs> that's SM Orc. Oh my god. Might Super as well just go for. Her. Charge, charge, and no, 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 no! You can't <laughs> do that. <laughs> you're, you're oh, leaving so much mana. No, it's not about mana efficiency. This at Birthor's Day, sure was good for RDU this game. Yeah, <laughs> it was it all too good. Goodness, but like I say, yeah, it's not so much about mana efficiency; it's more about the cards. And RDU didn't really have any cards. Oh, Trump will execute the War Song. Yeah, I like it. There's not too many good execute targets in this deck, mm -hmm. and you, the War Song is just so dangerous. Oh, I mean, Patron is one of the targets. Yeah, well, <laughs> but I'm not sure. Did the comeback start here? Does it? It depends Possibly. on the. It, it really depends on the loot hoarder's ability to draw something relevant. Mm -hmm. Get in here, Pylon. What if it hits for one? <laughs> what if it hits for one? Oh, that his face, this is perfect. No, but just getting an extra Grim Patron, because you can. But your board will be full anyways, right? Wow, okay. Oh, wow. That's convenient. Whoa! Oh, man. Wow, that dog oh, next man. from RDU! You know, we're, we're going a little crazy here. Yeah, this but... is Brawl. <laughs> yeah, we do, yeah, this, this is Brawl and Chuck Cat. Yeah, for mine. Pylon! And then it's just gonna be a brawl play, and all the hype is dead. <laughs> I love what each other. Won. Yeah, you know, Masan, you're you come from a Starcraft <laughs> background, so you know that these Grim Patrons, they're actually Protoss units. Yeah, they, they go, are. Oh they pile on. <laughs> yeah. Pile on. You must construct additional patrons. They're uh, colossus. I mean, pylons. And the brawl is like force field. <laughs> the guard is like, oh well, that's too bad. Here I had uh... a play, but now I don't anymore. Well, it was a good brawl. I mean, it was yeah, a legit was. brawl. Like, it was a real one. <laughs> yeah. This wasn't is some there, kind of fake, there a fake brawl. brawl? There Somewhere. are fake brawls, yes. When you do it on a flame imp and two implosion imps, that's a fake brawl. This was like oh, okay. patrons fighting with each other. That That's that's what I call a brawl. Okay. I live for these moments. Oh my goodness, the draws. Well, I don't think RDU is going to be able to kill Trump. Hey, you I just never know. Put that out there. Just want to put that out there now. Maybe he plays Rug. Oh. Maybe he plays Dr. Boom. Maybe he plays uh, Gromash. Who knows? Yeah, most decks these days, do they do play they Gromash. They do play Gromash, but, yeah. But also, at the same time, most decks, they do cut the... Uh, they cut Dr. Boom. I don't think his key plays them, by the way, because he has Lou Hoarders and Battle Rage. That's a little joke. I, I think, um, I think yeah, that he, after the Alish incident, I'm not playing Dr. Boom ever again. <laughs> and current patron of Warrior. <laughs> I, I learned something from that. Well, after the Alish, oh man, even a Sludge Vulture. I mean, everything oh, no. in Trump's deck at this point is just burying RDU further and further. In the. RDU could draw the entirety of his deck right now and do nothing. <laughs> And yeah. he would still lose, pretty much. Yeah. Because, like, no choice, his, he's no. used both Warsong Commanders, right? And besides, the, and he's used both Frothings. So, pretty much the only threat is a Grim Patron left. And without the Grim Patron, there's, like, without a Warsong Commander, you're not going to be able to activate the Grim Patron, right? So, the rest of his deck is, like, useless stuff, like Battle Rages, Unstable Ghouls, Armor Smiths, some weapons, I guess. Oh! Um, well, there is Grom. Yeah, but, but the, mean, it still it was, does uh, nothing. Right. Yeah. It's a yeah, sad thing. It's gonna day. be executed at best. Executed. <laughs> wow, that's that, best. that's really really grim. I just want to see uh, Trump take RDU to fatigue now. 
That'll be fun. Well, if RD is gonna lose that fight every time, but yeah. I, I wonder if Trump has the BM in him to do that. Actually, if he top decks the Green Patron here, or very soon, one of them might I don't be. Think, I don't off. think Grom is. Well, okay. Yeah. I, he disagrees. I mean, you have to make YOLO plays at this point. There's yeah. no other yeah. way. Like, face. Well played. Well, he is on 33 health, so I guess. If he plays, oh well, <laughs> that's that's not it's good. Just everything going wrong. So Trump, wait, which decks are left in Trump's lineup? Trump, Trump has, has Warlock and Warrior? Hunt. Uh, yeah, Warrior. Sorry, Mage and Druid. Druid and Mage. Wow. Oh, even two Dread Corsairs. That's interesting. Even it, isn't that pretty standard? I think uh, a lot of players have been cutting one of the Dread Corsairs. Okay. So instead of running really? two. Running one. Interesting. Yeah. I was not aware of that uh, that variance, but then again, I think it's one of the flex slots. That second Dread Corsair is definitely one of the flex spots of the deck. Yeah. So, yes. yeah, Trump takes it with Control Warrior with Mech, well, Mech Mage probably, and Druid left. Um, I wonder which of the those decks. I I think Patron is actually not too bad against Druid because of the Execute. Yeah. I think it's actually favored against it's Druid. It's a favorite. Yeah. It's actually very favored. Okay. I heard. Really? Yeah, I, I, very much. What so. I've heard. I, it's about 50-50, but it's definitely at least 50-50, I think. That's what I um, thought at, at first. At least in, in which way? <laughs> which direction? Oh, at least 50-50 for the Grim Patron. So either Grim Patron is favored or or it's 50-50. Okay. All right, got it. You have so many conditions. You can you can also burst the uh, Druid down easily. Yeah. yeah. With the double frothing berserker. Well, yeah, the two. Well, really, the two win conditions that you have, or the three win conditions, are bursting your opponent down with a. Uh, Frothing Berserkers or Gim Patrons or uh, Grom or the third one which I think is the most common probably is just getting a board with so many Grim Patrons that your opponent can't clear it at all. Yeah, who plays Starfall yeah. right? Swipe doesn't work so that's out of the window most of the time um, so it's really problematic for the Druid player. Like If you can populate the board with four Grim Patrons usually you end up taking the game at that point. Like three to yeah. four Grim Patrons is like the tipping point for the board control. We have the next matchup ready for both players. Uh, RDU, we have heard, is going to be playing Warrior again, of course. And Trump will be selecting his Druid for the next match. All again, right. we, have to, we have to remind you guys, this match is probably the most important match of this entire league so far. Because yeah. it will be the deciding match of the final um, slot for the playoffs. It's either Colento or Trump fighting for that final slot. And if Trump wins this match... He moves on to the playoffs. If he loses this match, then Kalento moves on to the playoffs. Yeah, Kalento got his win earlier on, so that that he needed he needs two things. Kalento needed two things to win versus Orange earlier. He got a reverse sweep against him, and he needs Trump to lose versus RDU. And basically, right now RDU is one game ahead of Trump, so it's two to one. And if RDU just wins against his Druid, since he's so favored, this could be the the end of the match. Yeah. I wonder, do you keep Harrison Jones here? I guess. Oh, it seems like a nice do. idea, yeah. yeah. Set up a dead's bite off whenever you're ready. <clears throat> so you don't want them to activate a bite on their turn as their wish. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Oh, even a wild Ooh. growth? <laughs> no, that's you know, a nice curve. What's funny is that Ancient of Lore is usually the best card in the Druid deck against Warrior, but against Patron Warrior, I'm not entirely so sure anymore. It may be a bit too slow. Yeah, it's funny. That's kind of funny. Yeah. Ancient of Lore being too slow. Oh, well, maybe Ooh. it's going to be too fast in this specific game. <laughs> I turn four Ancient of Lore. Is this real? Mind if I roll me. All right. Yeah, so two armor smiths is also um, not completely common here. Double wild grow. This is just oh insane. Yeah. So she's gonna he's gonna get a shade for his turn. Armor speed doesn't really help against the druid. I think it will affect Paladin maybe. It's not that bad though. I mean it can give you a bit extra durability and it's always pinging the face for the armor the druid gets, so at least it counterpoints the hero power for all that's worth. I think it's well, pretty I nice. Have to, I have to kind of agree with uh Masan here. Like mm -hmm. a lot of players don't run two armor smiths, and a huge reason for that is because it's not too great in the control matchups. Yeah. And it might be hurting RDU because Trump is known for, as being more of a control player. 
So this might be a reason why the armor smiths uh, might not be as great here as compared to some other matchups. No, I, could, I could agree with you. I don't think it's going to be... If you're building against a specific type of deck and it's control, I don't think the armor smiths further your agenda as much as other cards could. Well, Trump has double lore, Drake, Scenarius. This is looking pretty sweet. Finds the roar and the keep of the grove. Yep. Pretty passive turn, but he's about to put out a lot of damage. Yeah, he's going to be getting so much damage output. Unfortunately, no battle rage here. Battle rage would yeah. be sweet. Come on, here's a free dread corsair. I would probably trade it. Yeah, play it. I don't. Would you trade the armor smith or whoa? No, the dread corsair. I think it's too good not to play. I mean, if it's free, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm actually a little surprised to use the whirlwind so early. No, it's pretty good. I mean, you, the best time you're going to be using it is something like frothing to get a kill. But if you can play for the board right now and set up enough pressure, that's good enough. With the Grom in hand and the possibility of enabling it later, it's always decent. Mm -hmm. Now look at the amount of armor that Harrison Jones gives to RD. <laughs> that's a bit obscene, to be honest. Yeah. I can't believe I'm going to say that, but this Harrison Jones almost feel horrible. <laughs> like, you, you almost can't play it. It's... Well, to be honest, like, do you really care that your opponent has that much armor? And then I mean, he just do. buys time to, to get the combo and OTK me. I, I think I do a little bit. <laughs> Makes a little sense. Yeah. <laughs> Look at the amount of armor are these gonna get. <laughs> I'm looking at this and I literally can't believe it. Because in Control Warrior versus Druid matchup, um, as long as the Druid draws everything, Control Warrior usually runs out of cards mm -hmm. and gets comboed down. But in this matchup, it's actually the other way around. Right? Yep. So you, you're you're the one who doesn't want them to draw. You're the one who That's give everything kind of low. Yeah. The Warrior is the one who knocks, right? I mean, it's actually it's it's I, I like that. It's much much better than. Just letting him have it so that he can play with the green patrons and front buzzers. <laughs> oh man, I don't even know what I'm looking at. Look at this armor count. It's a, it's armor. over nine thousand for sure. The scouter, man, the scouter. It's gonna get bigger. Oh goodness! And he finds the Emperor Thorsten to go with uh, this. Trump is in for a treat. Twenty-two. Twenty-two armor. So RD realizes that Trump was trying to possibly set up some kind of uh, follow-up, so he just goes ahead and makes a trade himself. Yeah, now do you just... Do you scenarios here, or do you actually have to force of nature to clear this? Or, oh, he draws into Wrath, so he can actually Keeper and Wrath this. Yeah, this Keeper is probably his play. Yeah, unfortunately Keeper and Wrath, it leaves him with three mana remaining. Mm -hmm. So you Savage War for good measure, right? <laughs> well, Just to fill out the curve. <laughs> Well, on the previous turn, Trump could have actually Savage Roared instead of mm -hmm. Hero Power. And yeah. he chose to Hero Power just to preserve the Savage Roar. So I think he's going to value that Savage Roar. I mean, at 47 health from RDU, I just don't see Trump putting out <laughs> the damage it takes at this point. But it's possible that RDU whiffs at every turn, finds very little that he actually needs. It's possible. Trump does have card draw. He's got sturdy minions that are hard to remove. So if he gets the board, RD is going to be hard pressed to take it back. I think it's going to come down to really like one tempo play. Wrath hero power into the emperor is putting your re your health at risk. Too much. Yeah, I agree. It, it feels like an unnecessary risk at this point. Um, I think at this point you want to be using cards that just put more tempo onto the field rather than. Well, never mind. Ooh. You talk about a top deck. Well, then again, he did draw half his deck at this point, so yeah, that's true. He, let's not. I was gonna uh, say like you want to draw, you want to use your cards that get more value or get more uh, tempo on the board rather than get value. Yeah. But I guess if you can top like like that, you can just play whatever you want. Yeah. No mission inventor, loot hoarder, pass. I think and armor up. Really, I think Grom. Your Grom. Like Grom. Grom. So you Grom into a possible removal piece for it. Interesting. I wouldn't. I wouldn't do it, but yeah, I don't think I would do. I it think I'd keep it for the. It's an option the to consider. Yeah, maybe I'm too greedy with my Groms. Because like without the combo in hand, I don't think going for the kill just yet is. is well, worth my it. rationale, my rationale would be um, 
my opponent had a kind of looked like he had a hard time dealing with my emperor the last turn. So if mm -hmm. I put a 10-5 on the board, maybe he has some difficulty dealing with that as well. Well, you've and seen... if he does... Yeah, if he... Yeah, go ahead. You've seen big game hunters, so if... The, you're kind of... The, the game is developed enough that you just need a lot of ash from... On your board to win the game. Wait, what? We yeah, saw BGH? Especially with the fucking Berserker. Yeah. Well, we haven't seen BGH in this game. Yeah, not in this game. Not in Trump's this game. game. Okay. Yeah, that makes sense. Uh, that makes sense, my son. No, the my point question was that is, you don't want, the loot hoarder. want the big, you don't want that to be a game hunter, then you will likely more likely lose the game. Oh man. These draws will be very important for RDU. He's gonna have to find an answer to this board very soon because this is not yeah. looking good. Oh man, this oh, is no. everything uh -huh. but what he wants. RDU did in fact whiff. You know, I did say Trump would have a hard time of it, but RDU's been whiffing at every turn almost. So Grim Patron Cruel Task does nothing. Ooh. Dread Corsair Frothing, I guess, could remove at least one minion, but that's super vulnerable to any type of removal. And Trump has more than he needs. Oh, there is a big game hunter. Scenarios for plus two, plus two is going... Like, if RD doesn't play that's ball, insane. then he probably doesn't play it. This game is done. A rip. You could draw into. <sighs> into? I, I'm shout, listening. Okay. And then you draw into <laughs> Warson Commander, and then you wow. play Green Patcher and Borg Clear. Right. Right. <laughs> okay. I'll, I'll grant you that one. It's possible. Something like that is that. Yeah. yeah. That's probably. Actually, it's probably the most likely scenario of all the things that could happen on a Green Patron deck. Unless he plays Brawl straight up, which would be good enough. Oh no. He well, he's gonna get two Grim Patrons for all that's worth. Or he can just clear two minions right away. I think he might just have to clear. There's just too much damage on the board. Yeah, too much damage. So what is RD waiting for? The Magical War Song Commander play? Yeah, I think... He's looking for draw, but... Even if he gets a War Song Commander though, that 6-8 might... is it's just like immune to Grim Patrons. Exactly. That's why you need commanding shot. <laughs> the t new text on Drew the Claw <laughs> immune to Grim Patrons. I mean, I'd love to see a, like a single commanding shot in Grim Patron decks or, is pretty nice for situations like these that got out of hand with double wild growth start. I have to point out that the double wild growth start from Trump was really important in an unfavored matchup like this one. Yeah, especially uh, like following that up with an Ancient of Lore. Yeah. That's, that's just, just the best start you could hope for. Wow, the look at this uh, controlling nature of Trump. And Trump, oh, you failed God. me. You didn't put the pilot shredder in the middle. I wonder if he'll realize <laughs> it in faceball. Probably not. Well, I called it too early. This game is far from over for Trump. Yeah, just vomit your board now. Uh, yeah, see what's just... next, and really hope you don't die here, which you will. <laughs> I see your optimism is seeping back in. <laughs> yeah. Uh, okay. Yeah, that's rip. I think that's just an insta kill, right? We'll force an H Savage War. I mean, I, d I wouldn't even count this. I yeah, just, I would just go yeah. full. Yeah, I wouldn't even count it. I would just Shall go. Shall we count? It's a 17 damage there, plus 8, 25, plus 14. Yeah, that's so 39 damage. That's one, wow, up, that's one above. One damage off of. Wow, okay. It was actually closer than I thought. I would probably have guessed yeah. this was around like 42 damage. Also, Monk. He doesn't have. <laughs> 42, on, the answer to everything? On he doesn't the have... <laughs> Shredder not being at the center because Force Nature Stabs will make it up for it, right? Oh, good, good Maybe point. Maybe you thought about that. <laughs> you ever thought about that, uh, Monk? Did you know? Yeah. Well, I was hopeful that we'd see uh, a really good Grim Patron moment, but we did. We saw it last game. You know what? I got my brawl. I have nothing to complain about. I, I got my brawl. I I'm good. All right. I got yeah. it. All right, all right. So we're actually going to go into the deciding game here. It's going to be RDU, his Grim Patron Warrior, against the most probably mech mage from trump and uh i i feel like at this point coletto must be messaging rdu right now he's like what $10, are you doing dollars man ten thousand yeah. dollars for you to win this and rdu has to put on his like excessive scouting glasses to get the power over eighteen thousand. Ten thousand yeah, so, esports dollars and i have to say this <laughs> like throughout this kingwin pro league throughout the last like nine weeks or so yeah had so many matches and so many games but this game, the upcoming game, yeah. Mech Mage from Trump, a warrior from RDU, 
That's going to be the most important game in the entire Pro League. Yeah, for the playoff spot that Kalento is currently occupying, but Trump could dethrone him. And if he does, Kalento has no way to swing back in for a chance in yeah. the playoffs. So this is going to be it. Uh, if Trump gets it, this is a really big deal. And it's also really important for Trump. I mean, you're getting in the finals, right? So it's not just... Uh, Kalento's, like, basically, Kalento's fate, as you said, is out of his hands. That, that's all there is to it. Exactly. We're getting to the game soon. I hope uh, I hope we get to see an interesting game and not a blowout. Those those tend to be uh, they tend to happen. You ever see that with, like a game is super hyped and then within three turns, fire back <laughs> mode, it's over. You're like, oh well, I guess I guess that was fun. That's pretty good starting hand, I would say, from Trump at least. Yeah, definitely. Mad scientist, blast mage, claw. He's curving pretty much flawlessly. Yeah, RG, I just, yeah what's exactly. That? I would actually just keep all of it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Not not the best starting hand, but it's definitely above average. I I don't think does like Grim Patron does very well versus Mech Mage, to be honest. I can't say I've had like great success with it. I don't be too sure. Yeah, I'm not too sure which one would be better. With a snow chugger up. I mean, there's no shield slam, there's no execute yet, there's no axe, no death bite at the moment. If the snow sugar comes out and RDU can't remove it right away, it's essentially his grave being dug at that point. But then there are so many things you, your opponent can't really play or do against green patrons when it actually comes down. Yeah. You have to have removal for it, and which can be difficult as like mage to keep it. No, he needs to keep Frostbolt, I guess. If he finds it, this is going to be like the most important card. I guess the only time, like, it's pretty much the same thing as Druid, is if you get a full board of Grim Patron, Mech Mage doesn't remove it very often, but they get the initiative a lot faster than you do. Yeah, I'm sticking fast in that mm -hmm. case, this case. So Trump is thinking whether or not he wants to play Mad Scientist, Snow Chugger, or Coin Out. I don't see anything but Snow Chugger being a great play here. But yeah, I have to agree. Oh, step one. <laughs> now, now he's actually got an answer to uh, a possible like if he finds the execute, that's a way to get rid of the Snow Chugger if everything goes wrong. If everything were to go wrong, he would still be able to kill a Snow Chugger. This Frothing Berserker is kind of funny. Like, how do you deal with this? I guess you play Blast Mage? I mean... Oh. <laughs> I mean, how often does it fail? A hundred percent. You're zero percent. A hundred percent. Yeah. Okay. Amaz math right here. Double Dollar whirlwind. Done, right? Well, that was uh, that world. That like the whirlwind was good, but now I think he's gonna have to use it for card draw as soon as possible, and he does. I think that's pretty solid. He's got the emperor already though, so this could come in really handy. Getting a like a mana cost reduction on this, Ooh. and the beat yeah. down is real. Wow, uh, Whoa! actually going to get really punished here. Yeah, very much so. Yes. I, I wonder if he thought that like that specific line of play would come up, because this is a crazy hand, and crazy play from RDU. Getting a good Control battle rage as well. as well. It's crazy. Accidentally whirlwind? I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Accidentally whirlwind, escape concede. <laughs> Prep coin level, uh, level shame. And RDU is definitely dropping this Emperor Thorson no matter what happens next turn, right? Yeah, just oh, yeah. All, all the cards in his hand are just so low mana, and you want to decrease all of them even more. So you get a lot of free cards, a lot of one mana cards. Yeah. Well, RDU is going to be under, under the gun very soon here. Maybe finding a weapon would change his play. Because yeah, he might consider like the Dread Corsair with it, but... Yeah, Emperor, trade into the Mad Scientist just to remove damage on the board, because next turn, you'll be able to uh, play like a really bad creature anyway, like either a Cruel Taskmaster to start off, or um, a Loot Hoarder, so you activate the Mirror Entity. Or do you play Grim Patron and create the biggest Grim Patron board ever? <laughs> oh god. No? Okay. You could give your opponent a Grim Patron, that would be kind of fun. 
Yeah, that's the that's the point. Well, Trump is trading. Oh no! Whoa, what a great card for RDU! <laughs> what a great card for RDU here! Oh no! Do you do you so, ping and kill that? I think <laughs> I think you have to ping it right now, like while you yeah, still can. Oh my god! Get out of this, as, like while you can. He was gonna ping anyway. Yeah. So essentially, this is like Trump didn't get a creature, and he damaged his spider tank for two. Oh dear. It's pretty good for RDU though. I think he's forced to do this. Trump has yeah. no other choice. You don't want to keep that alive. <laughs> not as Mech Mage, no. <laughs> In fact, so you do not. An Acolyte. I think this turn is maybe... Probably. Quarter. Yeah. I would, I would venture to say so. I think it's the most sensible card to play. So do you play Grim Patron, Whirlwind, Cruel Task, and then... Like, have as many... Green patrons as you can over the course of a few. I want to test master first, but yes, that's gonna be insane. Mm -hmm. Bladim will just die off. If you think about it, just ping and kills five run and then. Yeah, by getting four of them, he's also not allowing Trump to get a perfect clear, mm -hmm. unless he trades away a lot of his stuff. So Trump's gonna have to ping the five one, train to the three two, train to the three three, and then Frostbolt, unless he just goes full face. And plays, you know, Noyotron and puts his opponent on the clock. I don't think... Noyotron is actually, like, you'd rather not play a Noyotron. <laughs> yeah, of course, of course. I, re I recognize that. But I wonder, like, if he had a Fireball here, this would be, like, the ultimate turn. I think you would consider going face if you had actually, to. Actually, as long as there's no charge, Noyotron isn't too bad. Yeah, there's... Because you just need to buy yourself turn yeah. two. I do think, like, you're on a clock now. Like, you can't deal with this board effectively, so... Well, yeah. he does. He do, he can do it. He can ping the the. He can clear everything and not leave any grim patrons behind. Can he clear everything? Yeah. Well, not. Oh, yeah, yeah, he can. Guess, he can. But he can clear all the grim patrons at the very least. Exactly. What if he finds an unstable ghoul? Oh. <laughs> and he he doesn't manage to get out of this alive. All right. I did not jinx it. At the very least. Yeah. Nox, no stupid. Oh snap. I feel like there was a shots fired somewhere in there. <laughs> well, this is the car that says uh, that says that, right? Yeah, it's the Stone Splitter Trog. Of which you did not know the name. Last time we cast it. Yeah. <laughs> You're like the Trog guy. The guy that <clears throat> like, yeah, the guy. The Trog. I have to say, that fact has still not changed. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm not really surprised to be honest, but I think right now RDU is in an amazing position. That Grim Patron turn he got, just the turn before that was like that was enabled by the Emperor was absolutely devastating. Yeah, Trump will have to top deck something like an Archmage Jantanize to get out of this. It's not over yet, and he could get the win yeah. if he finds a fireball. Just a fireball might be enough, but the taunt from the Dread Corsair is going to be a bit of a problem. Yeah, not only that, but the Armor Smith is also going to be a huge problem. Mm -hmm. Oh, oof. nice, nice, uh, nice card to find here. Yeah, Fireworks essentially will give him a very first, cheap right? Dread, for Cors Dread Corsair. Yeah, by a very cheap, you mean free? You know, I think uh, you can do what you want because a pirate is free. Wait a minute. What does he have? Are you counting for lethal? No, no, there's no way there's he has no lethal way. here. Yeah, there's no way as well. But he can get a really nice and clean board clear. Well, not board clear, but like a really solid board at this point. Like with the Dread Corsair being able to kill a minion and the mech being removed from the uh, Cogmaster. I was gonna say I'm a little surprised we didn't see the armor smith fall down, but I don't think there was a reason to play it. Did he even? All right, water elemental is no help here. That's funny that he has water elemental in his deck. Just uh, more four drops, more stuff against warrior, against rogue, against hunter. Definitely. Um, I don't think it's running Tron, but Warm until still solid. If Tron yeah. finds the Archmage, this could just be the game-winning card. Oh, yeah. 
But then what do you kill here? The Grom. <laughs> I, I'm gonna say the Grom, but you, you, you kill what you want, right? Yeah. I mean, you could kill the Warzone Commander if you wanted, but... It's turn 10. It's gonna be insane turn next turn for RDA. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he gets as good a turn as he can get with the Warzone Commander. Trump is aware of it, but what choice does he really have at this point? Unfortunately. And he's gonna try to play with the Fireballs. Oh man, Trump's turn- I mean, RDU's turn here is going to be insane. <laughs> oh, oh, crit hit you. Oh, oh, the armor. And the draws. So many draws. Pylon! Alright. Well, that's not too bad. So he's gonna get himself, what, four cards off of this, I think? If he kills the water elemental, which he definitely will, I suspect. Now the question is, how do you handle the water Ellie? Like, do you just try to get the armor from the armor smith to use your weapon, or do you trade no, away the, the grim? Oh, never mind. <laughs> Easy. Easy life. Mm -hmm. Now, does Archmage? Archmage still does solve the problem, right? Well, maybe not even. It might get, you know, three fireballs, but he won't get to cast the three of them. No. Okay. Well, there is and your opponent's fireball. gonna run into it to gain armor, so... Mm -hmm. Well, I think Trump... Uh... Funny thing here is, like, what do you even ping? You ping the Grim Patron, I guess. Like, that's... Well, does it even matter because it would have died to no another AoE? I think you armor plate the one health Grim Patient, then you ping it. <laughs> Could you consider just pinging the armor smith though? I'll ping armor smith. Yeah, probably. If you if you're going for the win here, I think that's the only play you've got, and you hope your opponent is whiffed at every single. Yep. Exactly, just full on. Because you're just hoping to hope. Top deck. You're just hoping to top deck the Antonius, right? Extra. Yeah. And then get two arrows and win. But yeah, then at this just point, three turns from here. Yeah, at this point, Dr. Boom wouldn't even be good. It would actually almost be a detriment, right? Oh! Whoa! Trump is going for the safest play I've ever seen, but... I guess if he wants to win with the Archmage... That's the way to go, I just don't know if it'll be enough ever. Yeah, I don't think RDU thought that thoroughly. Because he didn't play the, uh... No wish inventor first, but I don't know. Who cares at this point? <laughs> if he wants to just armor up into as much damage. Oh, okay, that that's fair as well. Like honestly, no plays are bad at this point. Mech warper. Oh man. Mech warper should say your mechs and spare parts cost one less. <laughs> wow. Would that and be that's... broken? Well, it might be, but. You know what's even more broken? That yes. Clemento has just qualified.